of his heart. So I'm willing to lend an ear to anybody for a long time. So I lend my ear to him, and I, the questions that he, were at, he was asking me about relationship, to be honest, really, I didn't really know what to tell him. So a lot of times when I'm listening, I'm not just listening to what he's saying, but I'm listening to the voice of God because I really need God to give me and word my mouth. So towards the end of the conversation, I asked him, and it was really the Lord, and I asked him, and I looked him dead in his eyes, and I bought the eyeball, and I said, look, man, your relationship with your wife, how was that? And he said, well, it could be better. And I said, yeah, that probably tells you the answer to the question of your relationship with Jesus Christ, that it probably could be better. And what he didn't want to hear was what I concluded with, and that, the, that statement that I gave him that I believe the Holy Spirit told me to tell him was that like a lot of us in our lives, if we look at the relationship of how we treat and honor our wives, it is a direct implication of the relationship that we have with the God that we've never laid eyes on. And I kind of stood back afar because he was a big old Marine. And he had muscles in places that I didn't think God gave muscles. And he gave me that weird look like I want to rearrange your face. And he was, he was talking to me pretty normal, or, you know, pretty uh, regularly. And after we had talked that day, it had been about three or four days, he hadn't talked to me. And eventually he came back to me and he admitted uh, that it's exactly what he needed to hear. And he knew without a shadow of a doubt there were some issues within his relationship. Relationship is key. Every time you look in the Bible, and I, regardless of what translation of the word of God that you're using, how many of us by a show of hands have seen these two words in the Bible before? In him. Right, we've seen it. In him, in him, in him, in him, right? In him, we're what? We got, I mean, we can just come up with a list. In him, we're sanctified. We learned that last week. In him, we're justified. In him, we're saved. Made whole. In him, we're made whole. In him, we have liberty. In him, we have peace. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on in him, in him, in him, in, in him. If the, when you see these two words in him, what this points to is relationship. Okay? In him. And the him in the capital H is talking about who? Jesus Christ. In him, we're redeemed, we're saved, we're set free, we're delivered. Everything comes through Jesus. The disciples had to understand this. And even in 2019, in little old Lincoln County, North Carolina, we have to understand this. Jesus told Thomas in John 14 and 6 that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And that no man can come to the Father except through who? Jesus. Relationship. In him. And what I really pray that men get tonight is that the in him, through him, and with him are the very three key ingredients that reassure us as men where we are in relationship to Jesus. Because here the secret is, and this is really not a secret if you read your Bible, that if you can constantly be in him and allow him to move through you and you invite him with you or with him, vice versa, God will begin supernaturally. And then listen to me. It won't take a long time. You will start, if you make these three things in him the very focal point or the nucleus of the relationship that should exist between Jesus and you, what you'll notice, I don't care if you're young as you or as old as the oldest Paul in the room, if he's here tonight, you will begin to see a drastic supernatural change happen in your life. It's powerful. Got to be in him. Relationship. Okay? And this word deliver. I'll give you the, uh, let's give you the, the adjective part of it first. The adjective part of this, 
I believe is to, what is it again? Help me, Holy Spirit. Ah. I don't even know if I'm spelling this right. Man, that GD is kicking in. Chuck, <laughs> right? Conscience. Is that it? Help me out, Scott. You got that. It would be great. You good? I was you good. That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Scott over there talking about your homeschool before we get up here, bro. All right. Conscious, right? Yeah. To make a conscious, or oh, I'm not even going to try to do that suffix thing, conscientious, all right, decision. Or a synonym would be intentional, okay? And what I want to show you through the Word of God tonight is the importance of being deliberate. To be intentional. To be deliberate about your relationship. <laughs> And it works even in the natural. I'm sure, I'm, and I'm, I promise you, it absolutely works in the supernatural. Most of us who've been married for a couple of days, right, we give to our significant others, right, on the birthday, anniversary, and all the other holidays that Google Calendar sometimes has to remind us. But because we've done and been with the same woman for so many years, somewhere along the relationship, it ain't as important as showering her with roses. Because if a lot of us go back to our dating, or, or some of us would use the word courting, right? Through the courting process or through the dating process, you did everything you can do to get her ring. Some of y'all caught that. <laughs> all right? You did, you, you put out all the stops. You were groomed. You made sure you had the best of the best on. You took it to the top-notch restaurants. You get married after a while, man. You kind of like Mc McDonald's will do, right? Mm -hmm. I need my phone to remind me when my anniversary is. And what I would caution you tonight is not to do that with Jesus Christ. And a lot of us have to remember this, that even from the beginning of God creating man on the sixth day, go back to the book of Genesis, right? God has always desired to be in direct communion and in fellowship with his creation. It was not until man through Adam, the God of this earth, deliberately, that that word again, transgressed the law of God that eventually began to break communion and relationship between Adam and Eve and God of the universe. That's what did it. They made the decision. How awesome would it have been to just be butt naked in the presence of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob wanting for nothing? Mm -hmm. And now because of the deliberacy of disobeying and transgressing God's law, everything around us in the earth, the Bible says, is what? Cursed. Now man, God said, will have to till the land and agriculture and bonding tobacco and doing all that other stuff and we spend money on going to places like the Virgin Islands and Jamaica and Hawaii. We say, man, those are some beautiful places, but really what you're admiring are beautiful curses because the earth is cursed. And my Bible tells me that even the earth that God created, it groans and it moans for the return of who? Jesus Christ. The earth. Right? Deliberate. And I want to show you tonight that it's, it, it, listen to me, believing in God is one thing, okay? And I'm telling you something, you've got to have faith. Let's be clear. All right. So Cliff is not teaching you tonight that faith must be subtracted in relationship. It's not what I'm saying. Hebrews 11, 1 declares that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what? Things not seen. Okay, you fast forward and go a little further, five verses down to 11 and 6. It says, without faith, without faith, when you subtract this faith in one, that without it, it is impossible to do what? Please God. You cannot please God without faith. The writer then goes on to say, 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But for he that comes to God, comes to God, deliver. That's an action. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And secondly, that he is a rewarder of them that do what? Another synonym. Diligently do what? Seek after, Seek after him. So faith is an absolutely mandatory prerequisite when it comes to being in a solidified relationship with our creator. But it cannot stop at faith. Why? I believe it's James, the second chapter and the 19th verse. For thou believest that there's one God, thou believest a good thing. But the devils do what? Also believe and do what? Tremble at the name of Jesus. You've got to be deliberate. Pursue them. Remember, sanctifies us, saves us, justifies us, gives us liberty, gives us peace. All things that all the money in this church could never buy, but because we place our faith in him, Jesus says, look, <laughs> there should be a relationship that exists. Don't come to me and call on me when you need something. How about just seeking me because I'm your father? Amen? Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. I said I was going to be about 15 minutes. I'd be 35, 40. <laughs> but open your mind. In him, relationship, and I'm going to open up the floor for about two or three for this question. Why do you believe that it is absolutely a necessity for you to be deliberate in pursuing a relationship in him? Somebody. I got that. That's good. I'll buy that. Not what I'm looking for, but you're not wrong. That's good. What else? Jesus said to abide in him. So who is talking? Say that again. To abide in him. That's what Jesus commanded us to do. That's right. To abide in him, follow him. That's correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. St. John 15. That's good. Not quite what I'm looking for, but not wrong, but right. Absolutely. To be like-minded. To be like-minded and something else is good. I buy, but not quite what I'm looking for. I would say so we could be sanctified, justified, at peace. It's a part of it. We've identified that. But why do you think we need to be delivered? Come on, y'all. Think about it. Be prepared. Be prepared. To be prepared. It's too easy to get distracted. Too easy to get distracted. I like all these. Give me something else. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Amen. And it shows that you really want it. Shows that you really want it. Free will. Free will. Okay, I got it. Give me some more. Man, you're making me think tonight. Focus. Yeah, I like it. Focus. Why do you think it's most important for us to be deliberate? Persistent. Persistent. I got it. Another synonym. To build a relationship. I like it. Simplify. Can't, can't do nothing without him. I mean. Absolutely. I got one better. How about this? You have to be deliberate. Because your adversary is deliberate. Mm -hmm. okay. You need to be deliberate. You need to be intentional. You need to make a God conscious decision. You need to constantly pursue him diligently. Because let me tell you something. That old serpent, that old Satan, the snake in Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 10th verse. The Bible says through John the Revelator. Oh my God. He said that he heard a loud voice from heaven crying out, saying that salvation is here. The, the power of Jesus Christ has come. And here we have the accuser of the brethren that is what? Cast down. For you, for you, for those of you that don't know, Satan at the moment is not in hell. Okay? He's not in Abraham's bosom and all this other false heresy doctrine that I hear on YouTube and see being preached in America. Okay, he is, his hour of being cast down permanently has not yet come. 
And if you read Revelation 12, 10, what John writes is, is that before he's cast down, he's going before our creator, the big H, and he's accusing Scott Broom before God, how often? Day and night. You need to be delivered because I promise you, him and every demonic principality that he tries to raise against you is intentional before God. You don't believe it? Look at the marriage statistics within the body of Christ. Trust me when I tell you that Satan is intentional when it comes to making every effort to destroy your marriage and your relationship between you, your spouse, and your children. He's deliberate when he launches attacks against your, against your physical body. He's deliberate when he launches attacks against your finances, against your home, every principality. He even takes it a step further and assigns demons to make efforts to physically possess the bodies of God's people. He's intentional. And how come you aren't? That's why we're losing the war, Drex. Intentional. He wants to jack your stuff up. He wants to rain on your parade. What is it? Uh, talk to me, Holy Spirit. Isaiah uh, 29, 19. <laughs> For the glory of the Lord, for they shall fear his name, Isaiah says, from the west to the glory of the rising of the sun. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard. God himself through the spirit of Jesus Christ will put up a dam and a barricade that will separate you between every demonic principality when you trust in him, when you allow him to work through you, and you invite God into your world. It's what it takes. But a lot of us are satisfied with just being saved. And praying to God that we hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, with no diligence and no deliberation when it comes to pursuing him through relationship. I wouldn't do it if I were you. Diligence. He's deliberate. Satan doesn't care. The Bible says he's no respecter of person. He don't care how much money you make or how many degrees you have by your name. He don't care that you teach a Bible study and he don't care that you're the associate pastor of Pursuit Church. He's not concerned about your title <laughs> and how much money you're pulling in every year before and after taxes. John 10, 10 declares that his mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's delivering in every sense of the imagination. Yet to most of us in modern day Christendom, Brother Lou, are satisfied with just being saved. I've made it and I've arrived. Colossians chapter 1. Turn there in your Bibles tonight. <clears throat> 